welcome to Empowered Heart to Heart, where you'll hear messages of hope, conversations that heal, and interviews that empower. Well, hey, this is Dr. Rhonda Simmons, and I am so glad to be with you today. It is a great day to be alive, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Empowered Heart to Heart. I'm so glad you're here. You know, I have said this for the last two years, and I have yet to be proven wrong, and that is I have met some of the best people on this show this side of heaven. I promise you today is no exception. You know, um, it, it is amazing to me the number of people I have met around the world on this podcast. It, podcasting has just opened up, you know, a whole new dimension for me because I found out that there are real people doing great things all over the globe and they're impacting their communities no matter where they are. And I am so glad uh, because today, before we get into the show and I tell you who we have, please make sure that you like, comment and share this video or podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel um, because you want people to know what you're watching. Yes, this is one of those things you don't mind telling people that you're watching. Okay, this is not that. Mm. So <laughs> I am so glad that you're here. Uh, make sure you connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And our ID is T-S-E-F-I-O-R-G. Make sure you're reaching out to us. We can be contacted at all of those uh, places. Of course, we've got our website at www.tsefi.org. That stands for the Simmons Empowerment Foundation Incorporated, of which I'm the founder and CEO. Hey. <laughs> all righty. So it is a great day. Now, let me tell you who we have on the show today. I am so honored because Stacy Hans Ansley, Stacy Ansley is our guest today. And she is a certified business made simple coach specializing in helping entrepreneurs transform their businesses into valuable assets. She has over a decade of experience, and she began her career in Christian nonprofit leadership. She's talking my language, including 10 plus years with Young Life. Wow, that is amazing. Stacy's coaching focuses on clarity, connection, and impact. She's featured in Donald Miller's newest book, Coach Builder, and is the creator of the virtual book club funnel and small business coffee chat. Stacy enjoys homeschooling her 12-year-old son, Jackson, and spending time with her husband, Jason. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I introduce to you my wonderful guest, Mrs. Stacy Ansley. Hello, Stacy. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you, Dr. Rhonda, for having me on. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. You know, we have so many things in common, but today is about you. I want to hear about the great things that you're doing. But please tell us, how did you end up being a business coach of all careers? How did you end up here? Yeah, absolutely. So we got to go back a few years. Um, so I didn't actually become a Christian until I was 17. I lived in California and never had the gospel presented to me. I lived in an incredible home, um, but Sunday was family day and, you know, we um, just never went to church. And so it wasn't until I was introduced to the gospel through the ministry of Young Life that I became a Christian went off to school and actually got my business degree at a Christian college, but then went into full-time Christian ministry. So I worked for Wycliffe Bible Translators at their headquarters in Orlando. And then I ultimately went on staff with the Ministry of Young Life, um, working at their camps, which are summer camps. And then when I met my husband and we had our son, um, summer camps is pretty busy. And uh, so I was like, I, I need to start transitioning out of this um, because it's just, you know, six, seven days a week. And mm -hmm. so we started our first business and it took off. It actually did extremely, extremely well. And to the point that when I went to the industry conference, while I didn't have the largest business, I definitely had one of the most profitable 
and definitely had created myself an asset. So then people within the industry started asking me to coach them. And then I started creating IP around that and realizing that while the stuff I was creating was that actually industry specific, it was industry agnostic and it was helping other people build and grow their businesses. And so whether it was the karate studio owner who our son, you know, attended classes at or the infectious disease office who I was getting my <laughs> blood treatments at, um, for her blood thinners, uh, they, uh, all started seeing, wait, there's value here. And I started coaching outside of the industry and it's been over 10 years now. Wow. What an amazing story. How did you know from the beginning that you had a product or a program that would work? So I actually, that first business, I sold it in 2018 to a national franchise. And um, there is a quote from Donald Miller in his book, How to Grow Your Small Business. And it's the statistics of the businesses. Like, so within the first year, 25% of small businesses are known to fail. Within five years, 45%. And within 10 years, 65%. Here's the thing that I think is an included in that numbers is I don't think they actually fail. I think that people start off building a business and what they end up doing is just creating a job for themselves and not a business that's an asset. And so they get a few years into their business and realize, wait a minute, I'm doing all this work and I'm making an income like I did at a job, but I don't actually have anything that I can sell. It's not become an asset for myself and my family. And so really honing in on wait, there's some specific things that you need to be doing along the way that not only generate the income now, but also are steps that create an asset. So down the road, if you want to pass that on to someone in your family, if you want to sell it, if you want to sell it to someone who works for your business, you now have the frameworks that you have created an asset. Oh my goodness. You're incredible. But you know, the one thing that I've heard you say um, that makes you so impactful and sets you apart is that you said you became a Christian and your bio says you're a Christian coach. And so how has your faith factored into what you do for a living? Yeah. So I think that I value relationships more than I do transactions. And that comes from just who I am as a person and who Christ has made me. Um, and that leadership really is relationships. And so if I'm going to be a leader in my business and if I'm going to be a leader, you know, to my clients and to potential clients and all those sort of things, then I need to be relational um, and really care about the other person as if it was my own business, as if I had to make those decisions. And so I think that the empathy aspect of, hey, this is what that person's going through really comes into play. Wow. Wow. You know, uh, Stacey, I've had the honor of uh, being in ministry for over 30 years now, and I've mentored a few uh, young ministers. And I started off the mentoring by saying, OK, close your Bible. And they're like, what? Oh, my goodness. I mess with their theologies all together. You know, well, how can I be a good preacher without the Bible? I said, we'll get back to it. Yeah. First and foremost is people. Yeah. Ministry is people. And if you don't know how to treat people, I don't care how well you can preach, teach or whatever. It'll be of no effect because you haven't mastered your ability to handle people. And I love what you're saying because it's, it's rare to hear that. You know, because people are always about the numbers and, you know, the profitability. And I'm not saying those things aren't important, but it's the people who matter. And, you know, if you're not impacting people, you're not going to get the profitability that you want. And so uh, thank you for just blazing the trail. <laughs> yeah, I actually have a visual model that I created within my business. It's called the three C's of revenue. And it starts out with content. You need to be producing content in your business. And the next thing is connections. Um, because you need to be making those connections. In Young Life, we had a saying that was earn the right to be heard. 
Um, and so when you think about making those connections, it's not always about conveying all your stuff. It's about listening to their stuff too. And then the last C is obviously clients. So if you can be creating the content, you know, then having those connections, it leads to clients and that clients, I mean, relationships over transactions. Wow. That is fantastic. That is wonderful. So what's, what's next for you? What's, what's on the agenda or is it too soon to ask? <laughs> no, I have several things coming up. So uh, this week, um, if you're watching it right as it releases, um, I am part of a virtual summit where I am talking about virtual visual storytelling um, within memberships. So if you have a membership community or looking to be part of a membership community, things like that are great. And then I actually am running and have been running for quite a while um, a four-week workshop and we go through Donald Miller's book, How to Grow Your Small Business. And uh, through that, it's, you know, really goals, revenue, operations, and wins is the grow. Um, and, and so it's virtual and we hone in on those things that you need to do from a messaging standpoint, from a sales standpoint, um, operations, there are just those specific steps and building blocks that you need to do within your business so that you're actually creating a business that's an asset. And so um, if you have a business or you're looking to start one, it's a great way to get plugged in. Wow, that is fantastic, Stacey. Um, so with all that you're doing, and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm asking this question, um, it's because I help uh, pastor's wives find balance uh, between their marriages, ministries, and careers. Yeah. And how do you balance all of that with what you have going on in your businesses? So uh, several years ago, I was part of a course and actually got certified in it. It was called 90 Day Year. And uh, it definitely, it's like 12 week year where we're planning out and we're scheduling. And so even now planning what the next quarter will look like, what are those priorities where in seasons past, it was like priority is that our son Jackson, that we're always at a Saturday morning basketball game for him. So, okay, that's a priority or, you know, like what are those main things right now? He's part of a homeschool co-op on Tuesdays. So, okay. Making sure that on Tuesdays I am available, but we do it quarter by quarter. We don't do it just haphazardly of what can I fit in this week and cram in this week? We say, these are priorities within our family and business and all of those sort of things. And then the other thing I've learned to do is shut the door. And what I mean by that is there are some things that have to happen in my business, um, but I have a home office. And in the past, if there was laundry to be done or dishes in the sink or just life in general, that I would be pulled as a wife and mother to those things rather than doing the things in my business that actually would help bring in the income to build and grow it that sustains my family in the first place. So I was neglecting my family inadvertently by not doing the work in my business because I was doing dishes. Um, the dishes ultimately got done and now he's 12 years old and he can do the dishes. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's where I would say is this, you know, look at it more as a, in this season, in these next three months, where do I need to put priority for each family member for myself included? I lead a group every other Tuesday evening in my community. Um, we were meeting at Starbucks, so it became coffee chats. Um, and we were meeting in the evening, but now we're meeting at Panera because they got the sip club. <laughs> um, and so uh, you can still get coffee, but um, we meet every other, and we actually outgrew Starbucks, but we meet every other Tuesday evening from like seven to eight, eight thirty ish. And we're all small business owners and we just gather together and we talk about what's going on in our business and life and families. And we've created this amazing community uh, of just women coming together. And it literally came from me saying, hey, I'm going to be at Starbucks at seven o'clock. Anyone want to chat? Wow. Wow. I, I'm just, I'm sitting here because I'm, I'm thinking so many things are going through my head at the moment, but even in your community service, you might as well say, 
it still aligns with your business. It still aligns with ultimately where you're going. And it's not, you know, sometimes people have this misconception that if you put people first, it's because you have some ulterior motive. And it's not that. It's just, it show me a business without people. And, you know, I'll, I can't even think of anything crazy en enough to show you, but it, it takes people. And so I love how you are so pe people centered and that's wonderful. Well, that is you. wonderful. Um, and so one of our key words in our organization is empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to ask my guests this question. And that is, what does empowerment mean to you? Empowerment means freedom in Christ, um, meaning I, the possibilities are endless. Um, I believe that God has given me a vision for myself and my family. And as long as I am in his word, walking with him, um, and continue to seek him that I can't go wrong and that, uh, that is empowering. Amen. Amen. Wow. I, I know I've said, wow, I don't know how many times in this interview and I keep thinking, well, that's really not very good interviewing skills, but that's because you have just amazed me. And, uh, in, in all the things that you do and the reasoning behind it. I think it's the reasoning behind it that, that wows me the most um, because uh, you keep Jesus first, you keep people first, and that just resonates so much with me. And so uh, I love the fact that you have things coming up uh, that you mentioned about like, like the virtual summit next week, uh, the book, congratulations on your uh, new a book coming out that you uh, co-authored? No, um, I didn't co-author. I appear in it. And it actually oh. came out pa this past March. So it's called Coach Builder. Okay. And if you buy the audible version of Coach Builder, I'm interviewed at the oh. end of the book. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And wonderful. then he has a course, which I'm also in. in. So yeah. Oh, well, that is fantastic. Well, Stacey, um, I appreciate your time here today. Um, is there any final... Uh, words that you'd like to share with our audience today that might help them, uh, that might ignite the fire under them to do what they're called to do? So I have a saying that I think can be adapted to just about anything. Um, but when I deal with business owners, I always say the transformation of your business will never exceed the transformation of you. So whether that's the transformation of your marriage or the transformation of your parenting, whatever, um, it's the work that you're doing inside you um, that's going to really matter most. You just preached a whole sermon. <laughs> yes, you did. A whole sermon. Stacy. thank you so much for being on the show. And if you'll just hang tight for a few more minutes while I wrap the show up, I'll be right back with you. Okay? Sounds great. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Rhonda. Absolutely. Didn't I tell you that I meet the best people this side of heaven? And Coach Stacy is no exception. You need to get in the room with her either during her virtual summit that she mentioned or coach with her uh, if you need to, to get a better understanding of how your business can be an asset. Did you hear that word she kept using throughout the interview that your, your business shouldn't be just another job that you've created for yourself? but you should be creating an asset. And so get with her, find out how to do that. Uh, as any true coach, I'm sure she has a step-by-step -step process that you can uh, follow and she can work with you to facilitate um, the type of asset you want to create in your business. So until the next time, make sure that you stick with us and you are prepared for the next uh episode of Empowered Heart to Heart, because it's going to be awesome. By the way, let me mention, 
For those of you who are thinking about that vision that God has placed in your heart, but you're afraid to launch it, whatever it may be, but you've got this burning desire to do something great outside of the box and it's called vision. It, you know, you've got this vision, you think about it, you dream about it, you daydream about it. It's on your heart all the time. You need to get in the room with me on Saturday, September the 28th for birth the vision. It is a visual, a virtual, excuse me, a virtual live intensive for women in Christian ministry and leadership. You need to be in the room. The link to it is somewhere around this uh, video and podcast description. Make sure you get in the room. In fact, I call it the delivery room because that is where we will be birthing your vision. You need to come prepared, not just for a sit and get where you're just listening to me talk at you all the time, but you need to come prepared to work. You'll be interacting with me and each other so that you can, in fact, birth your God-sized vision that day, September the 28th. So until the next time, be blessed, be encouraged, but most of all, be empowered. And I'll see you on the next edition of Empowered Heart to Heart.